Hello, and tonight my guest is Aaron, who comes from the Union Karate Union Karate Do. And he, um, tell me why you formed the club and what do you actually do? Yeah, so obviously formed the, the club Union Karate Do itself has been going for six years. But I was an assistant instructor beforehand uh, with another gentleman, uh, Mike Leverton, that I sort of helped him out for a couple of years just teaching. Then he retired. And then obviously I was a full-time engineer uh, working for a company installing background music systems. Uh, And at that time I was only teaching twice a week. Uh, then obviously lockdown came along. The field that I was in, installing jukeboxes, etc., uh, music, entertainment industry. Obviously, when COVID came along, uh, basically became non-existent. Obviously, people weren't allowed out their houses. They weren't allowed into clubs, pubs, etc. So obviously, I then got made redundant by the company I was working for, and uh, from there. I started teaching uh, martial arts through Zoom online. Uh, Basically, I sent an email out to all the local schools in North Devon saying that I was providing free martial arts classes for any children that wanted to get active. Uh, And I remember from there, from the first class, uh, I remember having over 100 little dots across the screen and over 100 people had logged in. Uh, for the free uh, karate class and then obviously from there that blossomed to quite a nice big audience and then from there obviously once lockdown had end, uh, finished uh, thankfully was over uh, all the schools that I'd offered all the free Zoom classes asked if I would uh, go and teach in all their premises and then obviously that then massively helped me grow the club from just twice a week so now we're running classes six times a week, uh, on average four classes a day. No, obviously so, you competed as you said in other competitions that we've uh, obviously we all from Geisha Karate and you've all sort of met and interacted yeah, with. Yeah, we've always obviously I was saying just beforehand about the mixed martial arts event that we I say that I'd like to host where we have. Basketball Shotokan Club, we have Will himself from Giza Karate, uh, Combat Jiu Jitsu, uh, Taekwondo Club, and I do believe I've missed one out. Maybe ourselves, uh, Wadaru, we, we all get together. Normally, always well over 100 people attend, and we all have 45 minutes training in each style, which is absolutely fantastic for everyone to get a little taste of all different styles. I like it. I like, it's a bit like um, Bruce Lee. In the um, Bruce Lee film, what was I thinking? Way of the Dragon. Yeah, you oh, find yeah, yeah. the way of different styles. I'm, not, not, I'm saying it's Bruce Lee, but you know, it just it, it's just that kind of thing. I like, I like, I liked, I like, I liked it when I did do karate because it did teach me discipline and to keep good practices. I had to give it up, yeah, unfo- yeah. unfortunately, because my knees and my body didn't want to give anymore. Because I was the oldest one there anyway. When it started, yeah, yeah. I was already. 20 years older than Will. So, <laughs> and so uh, I'm 61 now. So I thought, I was seeing the pro- progress and progress and I thought, they're getting too fast for me. They're going to just annihilate me all over the place. <laughs> but at least I'm honest, as they say, at least I, at least I got to green belt, which is quite proud of. It, it's, it wasn't yeah, good. Yeah, I, I tell you, I say, it's, I, I always say, you're never ever too old to do kata either. So, Obviously, you may not want to do the competition or fighting side, but I do believe if you do some of the catters, that uh, that is very good for your body overall. Uh, yeah, I might go back to that. I don't know yet, but I'm, I'm yeah, just... it, it's not it's not all about always the uh, fighting side of uh, martial arts. There is obviously the catter and spiritual side of martial arts. I think a lot of people forget about it sometimes. I think everyone sort of thinks martial arts. Punch, kick, clash, but obviously there is other sides of martial arts as well that isn't always about fighting. I always thought martial arts taught me never to fight because basically the yeah, best, yeah. best thing to fight is walk away. Yeah, yeah. Well, I say some of the top martial artists in the world they say 
we avoid the trouble before it even begins. It's not that he can't handle it. It's just it's just silly because you don't want to hurt someone just for the sake of hurting them. Yeah, well, I say it's obviously the the other side is also like teach self defence classes. Uh, I do that sometimes. West Buxton School, North Devon College. And I said, yes, you can uh, defend yourself in self-defense physically. But I always say if something goes wrong, especially at West Buckland School, where they're all very highly educated children, if they damage or hurt someone, from say they hit someone, they bang their head, that person goes into a coma or sadly passes away. They're now up for a manslaughter charge, and that's the end of all their career, etc. as well. So there is these other sides of the story that people seem to forget about. Again, I, I am always very cautious. If I was to get to a fight, then again, that could be my instructor's license gone. I would no longer be able to teach in all the schools that I teach in. So there's lots of other things that you do have to think about when you are defending yourself. Yeah, we learned that. And I used to be in mental health. I, I learned the, okay. the X-Shield method and obviously control and strength from Broadmoor prisoners, guards. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, that was they were pretty tough you wouldn't want to argue with them they went in they went in hard and that day that week the prisoners of the the, um the uh residents were very very quiet because they knew exactly what they could do (laughs) they would they would have i I was glad that in my record as a carer i've only had to help use control restraint three times in 10 years that's pretty good because i'd rather talk about it out so in your style, is it a mixture of similar to what Will does, hard and soft, or is it? Uh, well, so what we do is, is we mainly do all the cutters from Wadaru, which is obviously a beads, wear piece. Um, the art, I would say our cutters aren't as circular as Will's, but it, it's sort of, it's a very similar style in the start, in the, um, Aspects that we use circular motions a lot. Um, uh, yeah, so with those similar in some ways, but they're very different in others. Again, they have a lot of higher stances. Our stances tend to be a little bit lower sometimes. Um, yeah, it's just, again, same as shot can. Then they go to the net far extreme again, where their stances are extremely deep. Um, but again, Different styles have different reasons of why they do their stance training. Um, obviously, some styles say we have a higher stance to be in more of a natural position. And then other styles say that we have nice, deeper stances because we're training our muscles. Then when we go to do it in a higher stance, we should have no problem at all. So I've trained with lots of different instructors and there's lots of different philosophies and mindsets to why people do or styles do things a certain ways they do yeah um, I, I i as i say i think karate is well for listening watching it's like my my son does a bit of boxing and he's doing a bit of the kickboxing down the holes of the hall Vipe, yeah. viper martial arts i think it's viper yeah anyway he's doing a bit of that so he's learning obviously the boxing transfers a little bit over to that not the kicking obviously but the stancing, you know, the movement that yeah. bo- boxing is a British martial art, isn't it? As such, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's a very British thing. Is um, I say the old um, I, I always forget what they call it now. Is it the old Berry School rules? I can't, I can't remember yeah. now. Uh, didn't they say Cornish wrestling? I think something to do with judo. I heard a rumor. Something. Yeah, they, yeah. So the, 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 again. It's, such a massive uh, history of martial arts against so many different martial arts. I say, I, I, I always think it takes a lifetime just to learn one, let alone trying to learn all the history of, of all the other martial arts as well. And we will try and do our best to learn as much as we can. But I think the martial arts is such a huge world now. I think all of us in our lifetime can only get a small glimpse or a little bit of in our minds at one time. So. Do you do you do you uh, make sure that, that when you obviously train the children, you obviously say, say what everybody else says and don't practice it outside. You know, don't don't. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially because um, obviously I am in seven different schools 
and I do actually teach in the schools. I have to be make sure absolutely that they're not doing it in the playground, on the friends in the playground. Otherwise, I don't think the schools would take too kindly that all the ki- kids are practicing spinning kicks, locks, takedowns on each other in the playground. So I have to be very strict with that, uh, obviously, so that the schools keep welcoming me in. As a, do you yeah, find so, do you find that um I saw that you had a a girl who had um one one limb. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I was proud. I'm very proud that she did that because although I've got a disability, mine's nothing compared to hers. But I always think people with disabilities just because you've got a disability doesn't mean you haven't got a brain. You can't do something. Yeah, yeah. No, so we've got quite a few. Uh, children with different needs in the club. We have one child that only has one eye. We've got one child that's got cerebral palsy, where his body's permanently shaking. Um, we've got loads of children with autism, ADHD, etc. And I do find martial arts helps them focus the mind. And uh, yeah, it, it does them a world of good. I used to do Tai Chi. I used to love Tai Chi. I did find it transferred quite a lot, obviously, to martial arts. Yeah, as I say, Tai Chi, again, sort of, uh, like I said, the spiritual side of martial arts. Uh, again, sort of one of the things that was a big aspiration to me when I was younger is when I trained with one of the Grand Masters. I believe at the time, I think he was like 79 years of age, and he was walking on his hands and dropped down into the splits. And I thought, if I could do that when I was 50, I'd be super happy. <laughs> I'd be glad to do that now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's what I mean. That, 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 that's sort of one of the things that really made me want to try and do martial arts for the rest of my life. See, if you train correctly, do everything in the right way, keep your flexibility up, um, circular movements, keeping the hips active, keeping all your joints active. Obviously, I, I feel it is very, very good for the body. Again, it's trying to minimize all the clashing and high impact stuff which again i sort of see particular styles they all, all of a sudden they will have to wear knee braces they say no we can't raise our leg anymore on very the techniques and stuff i like to train and teach i like to feel that you should still be able to do even when you're 60 70 years of age yeah because or something if you're youth yeah, because as you used to say, when you're younger, you've obviously are more flexible. You can you can fall down and not worry about it. I I always was constantly worried yeah, about yeah. falling. Obviously because I was older. I was more worried about yeah, breaking yeah. a bone. I think that's probably what like, put me back a bit. I think because I was afraid of falling. And because that's one of the main things in martial arts is learning how yeah, to yeah. fall. I think that put me back a bit, but you know. But that yeah. was my that was my brain, not everything else, but Yeah. So, do you do weekly classes, or do you do a set? I know you do a summer school because I've seen the posts. Yeah, yeah, we've just we've just completed summer camp number one. Uh, we've got summer camp two starting this weekend, so we should have well over another fifty children attending that. We our first day is a special weapons training day where we teach the children bow staff, katana training. Uh, knife defense and for a bit of fun we friends some ninja star throwing as well then our second day we do a lot of sparring uh, board breaking and we do a, a mini kumite competition which we all seem to love and enjoy then the final day we do kata training a mini kata tournament uh, again we do some break falls flying kicks and then we finish it off with a big giant walk pistol fight which all the kids seem to enjoy <laughs> I used to know somebody in Biddeford that used to do the the Joe, the bit teach the Joe. Oh yeah, the Joe, yes, yeah, short version of the bow, yeah. And he 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 was um oh he's very good. He, he even taught the mark like the the people that did the dance, you know. That's how good he was. Yeah, I yeah. can't remember his name. I used to do a keto as well. That was in, in Bucks Cross. Like, yeah, yeah. They used to do that course and that. There, keto's weird. It's one of those weird things. You think it doesn't work. Because it looks like nothing, doesn't it? It's just like, yeah, yeah. what did you just do? And then I, it just threw me and I didn't do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, but obviously, back to the normal classes, 
a very busy schedule. Monday, we start off at Pulton School, and then we go out to Buckland Brewer, um, and we teach out in the village hall there. Then Tuesday, we teach at, I believe it's Kane School. Then from Kane, we then go out to Croyd Village Hall, where we do another three set classes. We do children, teenagers, then adults. Then Wednesday, we do Southley Primary School, followed by, we then move on to Kingsacre School again, where we do another children's teenage class, followed by a ladies' self-defence class. Then Friday, we're out at Ufkin School, and again, we go back to Kingsacre, where we again do another children's class, teenagers class, followed by an adults class. And Saturday morning, we do our early years class, where it's normally children under six years of age and then we then move on to a general class where people of all ages can all train together so it's a very very busy schedule and Thursdays we're at North Devon College doing uh, self-defense in general for well originally it was aimed at vulnerable adults ladies etc I think now they're opening it up to sort of a wider audience now so yeah it's a very busy weekly schedule Right. And obviously, um, would you do another tournament like there was up the in-house one, like where we're at, or would you like do like to do like um combined tournament, so like um kata versus kata kind of thing, you know, like yeah, well, obviously, so club tournament. Uh, I believe it was March. We had well over a hundred attempts. Uh, what we've got coming up is I'm looking at hosting an all-star tournament. Again, I've invited Wills Club, Basketball Shot Can, uh, Combat Jiu-Jitsu, looking to invite a few other clubs along to that tournament. So, again, I'm looking at well over 100 attending that one. So that should be a fantastic tournament. Then we also have uh, the WKU National Championships. That's in Birmingham. Now we've got a squad heading down to there. And then hopefully Will himself is doing another tournament uh, in the winter time, Novemberish time, I believe. And yeah, he normally he's does that. Yeah, he hopes to yeah. do it. Then. I think he's yeah, trying to move premises before then. I think he's still looking for a premises. I think he, I think he's moving premises sooner or later. I think he's got. Oh, moving premises. I think so. I think it's in the process. I wouldn't like to confirm either way, but as far as I know, yeah. it's in the process. But. I'm hoping it goes well for them in the World Championship because it's a long journey. Yeah, yeah, Canada, yeah, yeah. it's a fantastic opportunity. And I, I think people don't realise how much hard work it is to get there until they've actually yeah, done. Yeah, no, very, very difficult. So I competed myself in the 2005 Wado International Championships. And I was very fortunate. I think it was the second time ever. It was hosted in England, so in Reading, so I didn't have to travel abroad, so I didn't have so much expenses with flights, etc. So, um, but yeah, I've uh, done extremely well with the squad. Uh, we beat a lot of countries, and we actually came second in the world. We lost to Japan in the finals. Well, that's all right, isn't it? It doesn't matter if you lose to Japan. I mean, they're probably the best <laughs> in the world, didn't they? I mean, they invented it, so if they can't win it, it's only wrong, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was, uh, I believe it was the best England squad had ever done uh, in the Wadaru International Championships. What so would you like to do in the future? What would you see the future of karate? What would you like it to do? I know it was once in the Olympics, only because it was in Japan. I think that's the only reason they allowed it back in. Would you like it to yeah. be back as a martial art and have the same status as Taekwondo and Judo? Olympics. Yeah, again, it would be nice. The only problem I do appreciate that because Taekwondo, Judo, boxing, there is so many similar fighting arts already in the Olympics. Why, obviously, they will only sort of allow X amount in because, again, as viewers, there's only so much people want to see of one particular thing. But then you get down this arguable line as well is karate better than Taekwondo? Is it better than judo? Is it better than boxing? Like, is it, as I say, you could argue taekwondo is just kicks, boxing is just the arms, karate does kicks and punches, it does takedowns. Obviously, we have the kata aspect as well. But again, that's down to the people uh, in the Olympics to decide 
which martial arts should be obviously viewed by the public the most. Um, I, I do feel strongly that karate was definitely a very strong candidate, but yeah, I can't. I personally can't see unless we go to another Asian country again for the Olympics that March, uh, karate will probably be back in the Olympics anytime soon. Oh, tell me everybody where they can find you. Obviously, Facebook, because that's probably easier yeah, yeah. than anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, obviously our website is www.unionkrotodo.com and obviously we've got the Union Krotodo Facebook page. Again, we've got hundreds of videos of what we do in our communities. Um, i say we just have under 300 students in the club currently. Um, we probably, at this moment in time, we don't really have any visions of expanding. We do have four other schools that have asked us to obviously teach on their premises, but at the moment we do have a pretty stacked diary, and uh, yeah, and, and unless we can get a couple more instructors on board, we're pretty capped at where we are at this moment in time. That's a problem, isn't it? Getting very good instructors, right? Yeah, because I think you, I think to be instructor, if I'm right, is a black belt is probably best. But I think you can be. Brown belt, brown belt third, I think. I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, well, they, they normally say second dan and below, you'll be called a sampai, and then when you're third dan and above, you then can be classed as a sensei. So that's normally the, tra the tradition of martial arts. Yeah, I know when they go up, it's to, sometimes it's more or less like you do a, a session of katas, and then you get the fifth dan and then you do if you get once you get to the ninth tenth dan it's basically knowledge and it just what you know more of them yeah 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 uh, again, again i fight a lot, a lot of uh, after fifth dan in all different associations and organizations your next dance are normally rewarded through time served with your organization what you've done for your community what you've done for your martial art experience time served etc so uh, how, how i see it normally goes about um a lot of styles normally only grade up to fourth dan some fifth dan and like i said after that it's sort of down to what you've done for your particular style martial art organization and community well thank you aaron for your time of day i do appreciate that you spent this time and you didn't know me from adam you get this thing going oh yeah Aaron, can you talk about your karate club? At least you knew I did karate before, and you sort of knew who I was, so that's fair yeah, enough. Yeah, I was Gary told me he spoke to you at Wills Championship. Yeah, I speak to anybody. I'm, I'm pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, it's a... You yeah, can't... But I say, obviously, you're, you're more than welcome to come along and visit our championships. Um, so we're still in the middle of securing a venue at this moment in time, but once we've got our venue secured... Yeah, I'll so come along one day. Come along and I say I'm hoping there'll be more than a hundred competitors. So it'll be a long day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I'd have to set up a couple of sandwiches and a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Aaron. Um, right, let's see.